it's episode 56, and I'm your host today and every other day. I go by the name of Kim Marcus, aka I Still Wi Fi, and we got a super special guest in the house. He's been on a couple episodes before, but this is his first solo episode. Solo, so solo, dolo. It's, I feel like it's going to be a, a really good one. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, we got uh, Kevin Allen in the house, man. How you feeling today? I'm feeling great, man. Happy to be here. Been looking forward to, to this opportunity for a while mm-hmm. to kind of hop on here and chat it up with you just right. two dudes and just kind of you know get some get some things out there to the world so i'm looking forward to it right, brother right kevin's really been doing his entrepreneurship right now so that's why i kind of wanted you on the show yeah word but uh we're gonna cover some of your background we might talk about some things we already talked about cool. however cool. we'll probably just emphasize it a little bit more this time sure thing but before we get started i just wanted to shout out my sister yolanda who started a, a website is coming soon though it's a uh, podcastuniverse.co and she's selling everything related to podcasts so she's oh. anything equipment related merchandise oh good stuff. she's gonna have on deck so i made okay. sure to remember to plug her and she's right now getting the website up and running so awesome yeah i'll be on the lookout for that yolanda huh? congratulations excited yes. for the finished product to be out there and i think that's an awesome move so congrats right, on that right but uh wanted to start with kevin man um founder of k mats so that's uh kevin's M- math or mentoring mentor and tutor services mentor and tutor services yeah, yes yeah, yeah. Hey, Matt. yes sir so uh it, it is a, a a math uh a business that you started or a math kind of venture you started that's exactly um, right and i definitely want to cover that we'll, we'll get to that we'll touch on that a little bit later mm-hmm. but i wanted to talk about your background first and um where were you born and where were you raised at mm-hmm Oh, sorry about that. No yeah, so I was... Stay uh, hydrated, my friend. Stay hydrated out there, man. <laughs> it's a hot day out there today. Uh, yes, yeah, so I was born in the Bronx. Born in the Bronx. Yes. Yep. And I lived in the Bronx for about maybe four years. Okay. And then my family, uh, we all moved to Yonkers, New York. And I lived there for about maybe five or so years. So and you have very vivid memories from New York then, huh? I, I definitely do, and, and we'll, we'll definitely get into this, but I definitely, not so much in the Bronx, I don't think I really have any, any real memories from my time in the Bronx, aside from like seeing some home movies and stuff, and seeing you know, certain things like that, mm-hmm. but uh, Yonkers for sure, Yonkers from second grade into fifth grade, I have real, real strong memories of some things that, that, went, that went down and, and kind of I experienced out there, one of which was... I, was, I had an opportunity to be a part of this uh, a cappella choir, <laughs> which I don't think you know. No, nah, I don't I'd think probably I remember never, this one. I probably never shared this with you. Uh, it Appreciate was, it for the show. No problem, no problem. Yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, let's see. I think in fourth and fifth grade, there right. was uh, there was like an opportunity for the students instead of doing like their regular, um, I guess, creative arts class, which they select whether it's drawing or art or whatever the case is. There were certain students who were selected to try out for a choir. Mm -hmm. And at the time, you know, I I don't know how they came up with, you know, these students are the ones that can try out because I I don't think I had any inclinations about singing or anything like that back then. Mm. Um, I think it was more so, oh, you know, this kid looks well mannered or he looks like he might he or she might be a a good, good person to kind of join the choir. But uh, so yeah. they tapped you for it. Literally, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember, and you, you talk about memories. I mean, this was this was fourth grade, which is which is kind of crazy that I remember it because I don't even remember you know what I wore last week, uh-huh. for example. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I um, yeah, they they tapped me out of class and they had me sing like a like a little piece or something. Okay, and I Acapella. did it. Yeah, uh huh, uh huh. And I that's did a it. lot of pressure. I'm telling you, I don't even I don't remember where it came from because I don't think there was any any chatter or any talk about anything prior to that. So this was like a surprise, and I was like, all right, let's do it. Sure, let's rock. Let's, let's rock. Let's, let's see go. what happens. Yeah, right? He's got talent. Yeah, man. That, exactly. <laughs> Before that was even a thing, man. Um, but yeah, so so I so I did that, and then this choir it ended up being a really really you know amazing experience and a successful one. My younger sister was also in it. And one of my little highlights, or not really little, but pretty big highlight, mm-hmm. is um, I had a chance to sing at the Rockefeller Center Christmas lighting. There you go. Um, so I had a chance to sing there. And, a lot you know, of celebs out there too, right? There were a lot, except I think the biggest, I'm going to throw it out there because you know, it is what it is, but the two biggest celebrities that were there when we went were Kenny G, who at the time I didn't know who he was. I kind of still don't, but <laughs> I, know, I know who he is. <laughs> you better know, man. You got to know Kenny G. No, they, not, not necessarily. I guess I'm sure there's some people that don't. But uh, him and guess who the second celebrity was? He's an African-American individual who's been under 
a tremendous amount of heat lately, and now he's he, he's fallen from Ben grace. Carson, uh-uh. Kanye, uh huh, uh, fallen from grace, and he's <laughs> locked up. And people are sad about it, but they're also like, "Well, if he did that, then he needs to be locked up." R. Kelly, even if he's blind, and even if he's oh, old. Oh, Bill Cosby was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I'm going down the list. That's there. it. I was like, <laughs> it's gonna happen eventually. Not a don't fall off. <laughs> right, right. That's true. That's the savage. Man, Bill have, Cosby. Bill yeah, Cosby. yeah, he was there. He was there. He was there. <laughs> and uh, those are the two celebrities. And then, like the next year is when I think Britney Spears. I remember was there. If we watch it on TV, but I, we we weren't singing there. So I was like, man, you know, we missed out. She was like, you know, a big star at the time. Yeah. Someone I would, you know, enjoy She's seeing her first. White hot stuff. at the time. Right? White yeah. hot. Yeah. Exactly. White hot. But uh, yeah, so Yonkers, you know, a lot of, lot of great memories out there. Uh, I can't say I keep in touch with too many people, well, really anyone out there, although something I posted on Facebook about the business recently, mm-hmm. my, my, my choir teacher, choir director, choir teacher uh, at the time, um, she, I'm connected with her on Facebook, so she mm-hmm. actually had like some kind words to say and put like a little, That's I think dope. like a review up on my business page, on my business Facebook nice. page, which was really nice and, and unexpected, so that was cool. Yeah, Yonkers was good. We moved to, moved out of you know New York. Had an opportunity. My parents did to get us to you know a place where they felt we were gonna you know be able to achieve our goals and, and really be successful education wise. Yeah, talk about that transition though. Like moving from the Yonkers oh, to uh, Jersey, right? It was a lot. Yeah, yeah. Piscataway. Piscataway. Yeah, Piscataway. There you go. Yeah, ninety nine, ninety nine. So twenty years ago this month, pretty so much August nine to two thousands. Okay. Ooh, right in that transition, <laughs> man. That's it. From the nine to taking the two. off. Exactly, man. It was uh, it was de- it was definitely a transition because it was a huge, you know, it was totally different, mm-hmm. you know, type of perspective. Being in Yonkers, we used to live, you know, in a corner, um, this corner house uh, apartment, rather, you know, renting. And my brother and I would be out there like playing football catch and stuff. And mm-hmm. then you have like people, you know, walking around the corner, these, you know, guys or whatever. Hey, hey, little man, let me get, let me get a toss. Let me get a toss. I'm like, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know what to do. I, yeah. I, I, I want to give it to you, but I also don't want to <laughs> lose know. my football. I already know. They're going to take that ball. Right, right. right. <laughs> and so I, oh, it's an official I, joint. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, they would look at it like, oh, sh- okay. Yeah. And then, we can't really do anything about it. We're not going to go. <laughs> We ain't gonna go that chase them age, or yeah. nothing like that, man. But we 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 would just you know do. And they, I don't think anything's ever happened like that, which is I guess we got lucky with that. But um, yeah, the transition was. I, I think overall it was smooth. I don't I don't think I recall anything that okay. was real specific that just new was school, difficult. Exactly. Had to make some new friends. That's exactly. Do you right. remember your first friend when you came to Piscataway? Ooh, yeah, yeah. My first friend in Piscataway was was probably a, fr- a guy named Iqbal. Shout okay. out to Iqbal. Iqbal. Who lives shout in, out Iqbal. Shout out to Iqbal. I'm going to send him this link later. I keep in touch <laughs> with him. Iqbal lives in, in Delaware now. But yeah, he was probably my first, yeah, he was my first really good friend yeah. out this way. And um, yeah, and then, you know, little little by little, you start coming into your own. This was when I was in sixth grade, starting sixth grade, mm-hmm. sixth, you know, middle school and stuff. So yeah. It was good, man. It was a good transition. Lived in Piscataway for, you know, many years and went to Rutgers to kind of, you know, continue down that little the right. timeline. Went to Rutgers, did engineering there. So talk about uh, going to Rutgers or applying to Rutgers. Did you apply to multiple schools or was oh, Rutgers man. like number one and only one? Oh, man, I had a wild experience because I, I, um, I didn't apply to any other schools but Rutgers. So you was all in on Plan A. I was all in on Plan A. And I was on the waiting list at Rutgers. Man, for, you sway a little bit? I was nervous. <laughs> I was I was nervous, man, because I I didn't. I, the backup plan was to go to Middlesex, which you know Middlesex County College, which wasn't, you know, even in hindsight, that's that's nothing bad or terrible about that. Mm-hmm. But at the time, there was a you know a perception about Middlesex County College being thirteenth grade type of a thing, which I think may may be the case at other county colleges maybe as well. Right. But um, that that was going to be the plan to go there. And try um, to transfer out. Uh, exactly. After two years or something like that. Yeah, do the associates thing and then mm. transfer out after two years. So why um, just apply to Rutgers though? Why not apply to other schools in Jersey or question. apply out of school, uh, out of state? Sorry. No, nah, that's a great question. I I think that um, I didn't have I guess the yeah I guess the proper guidance. Mm. I didn't you know shout out to my guidance counselor in high school. <laughs> I didn't uh, have the proper guidance. Right, shout out to my guidance counselor. Nah, well you know what I actually I, I didn't um I, I didn't have like a relationship with her because so my mother in law is a guidance counselor sure right Jessica's mom's got shout outs and we're doing a lot of shout outs shout out to out. yeah shout out to Mrs Travis so she's a, a guidance counselor and and talking to her you know into adulthood and stuff um sh- let's see here she has mentioned to me that yeah my counselor at the time knew who I was but we really didn't interact that much yeah. and apparently i guess with with like that type of thing like the counselors are really inundated with 
um, working with the trouble students typically, mm-hmm. at least in this school and kind of helping them get back on board and stuff. And I was kind of doing my thing. So I was good to go. But obviously in this particular case, certain things that I didn't have really clarity on or, or knowledge about resulted in me just applying to Rutgers. And I remember being on, this is 12th grade now, wait, being on the waiting list all 12th grade up until probably maybe like March or April. Mm-hmm. Like, and I had no idea what was going to happen. You and got that was, letter in the mail. It actually happened in English class in Mr. Madunio's English class. <laughs> Let's get it. Shout, Shout out. out Mr. Madunio. Shout out to Mr. Madunio. <laughs> we were just hanging, we were just, well, hanging or whatever. We were all in the classroom doing work or whatever. Probably was a Friday because we were all kind of like, you know, in chill mode and we're all seniors. I was of in course. chill mode the whole year. The whole year. Is that right? <laughs> Why not, right? Once you get Every accepted. Period, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's all like, year all bets are off at that point you know i, I know where i'm going lunch, play some speed <laughs> get out of there wait that's a real thing space right? high school yeah so we used to have oh, a free shoot. period uh night period nice nobody went home we just played spades in the cafeteria <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, how i learned uh, how to play spades that's shout that's, out jordan williams oh man <laughs> but such a fun game too man that's like it's like the it's like the you don't it doesn't cost anything and i was talking to my mom about this the other day it's like I, there's few things that I think are more fun than playing space with with you know three other people, mm-hmm. and everyone's on a whoops, everyone's on a I similar level. Like I don't have that. <laughs> I got excited talking about space because I, I want to like do like a meetup or like find some you know like minded people. Cause I, I would love to play like once a week, and it's like I thought of this like maybe years ago and just mm-hmm. never actually you know came to fruition. Yeah, right? never did. Maybe this is a reminder that I needed because you, you, in life you got to do you know the things that make you happy and having an outlet, something that you enjoy to do. There's really no reason that you should. So you, do it. what were you thinking about doing? Having a spades tournament every week or having yeah, people get together like. like yeah, a get together. Not a poker night, but a space night. Exactly. Uh-huh. Exactly. It's some, and even if it's, you know, every week is, it might be like a thing where it's difficult for schedules and everything. Yeah. But even even so, some type of a time frame that works every other week or whatever, where that that would be a, a ton of fun. I would I would like I would love to do that. Yeah, people are intense about space. That's why I'm I playing. know. I know. It's, it's <laughs> wild. It's wild. I'll be forgetting stuff all crazy. I'll be zoning out. Right. Right. And you <laughs> I'm can't, a daydreamer, so you can't I forget who cut who. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You forget who cut who. You about to get cut. That's right. end up happening. Right, and then you're not. And then that person that you're playing with is never going to play with you again. Because yeah. like you know what, this was not actually fun for me at all. So for I sure, don't for do sure. This anymore. So uh, didn't have the private book guidance, but you did get accepted. So you found out that period. So I you, found who out told that you? Period. Your teacher or your mom text you? No, nah, I was uh, I was actually in. Um, I think I just had he had a computer in his classroom, mm-hmm. so I just hopped on there. I was checking probably every day at that point. I hopped on there, and I just remember like hitting that the, refresh button all crazy. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, hitting that drum, <laughs> just, just you know, just trying to, just hoping for the best. And right. I remember the color. I remember it was always pending yellow, and then it, it was green. I didn't even read the word. I was like, I'm, I'm in there. Mm, the Tiger Woods fist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is the start right here, man. And Rutgers, I mean, you know, Rutgers was was awesome. Rutgers was an awesome experience. I, I didn't live on campus there. I, I'm about I, to say you lived off campus. Off right? you, campus. Still, you still live home, right? I still live home. My okay. parents live like, you know, like three minutes um, behind like the Rutgers Stadium. Okay. So I opted at the time to not, you know, go the go the route of, you know, living on campus. It was just more campus. practical to live at home. It was more practical. I don't practical. know it was more practical or was a financial decision you guys, you made, like, or a mixture of both. Yeah, at the time, it, it was, I don't know, you know, why necessarily, but it wasn't even, like, a, a consideration that I made, like, oh, I, I want to live on campus for at least, it was like, no, it doesn't make, I guess I was maybe too old for my own good. I was like, mentally, it didn't make sense for me, too, and I was thinking about the future, and I was like, I, I didn't have that strong a lot of money. Yeah, I definitely saved a lot of money, but I have mentioned that I, you know, in hindsight, 2020, I would have done at least one semester mm-hmm. just to get that experience. But, you know, in life, you make those decisions like that. And it's really not anything that other than that, nothing that really could have been done. You make the decision, you kind of sure. move, move through it and stuff. But overall, man, <clears throat> excuse me, great experience there. Uh, did engineering, like I mentioned. Right. And so did you know engineering was always going to be your major or you, you kind of had to fill it out once you got there? Uh, so I definitely knew when uh, when I applied, I definitely knew that, you know, when I when I was considering where I wanted to go, engineering was definitely the route I wanted to go. And mm-hmm. then electrical and computer, you know, my dad ha- has always had an inclination to that, introduced me to things involving that, had a chance to take some electronic uh, le- electricity electric circuit courses in high school my high school offered a couple oh, that's dope. so yeah. that was like my first sort of uh you know exposure to that stuff and yeah i mean engineering at rutgers was was really really challenging as mm-hmm. I, i'm sure it is at any university right um but 
I've learned that, you know, at Rutgers and then, you know, I can chat a little bit about other uh, academic related challenging endeavors I've had since then. That's something, one of the things that, you know, sort of drives me is like having a challenge and having to use my brain to figure something out. Yeah. Um, that's what, that's what kind of, you know, what my strong suit is. And then, you know, being able to, what I'm kind of learning as an adult, being able to know that, you know, hey, everything can't be solved analytically, especially mm. interpersonal things. Yeah. Um, Relationships. Yes. Yeah. Relax. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's not all logical. Sometimes it's emotion, all, all these other things. That I'm, things go into it. Yeah. Ooh, you said it, brother. You said it. <laughs> okay. And so you was, you was at Rutgers. You was part of the minority, uh, uh, was it engineering yeah. organization? Yeah, there, right? sure. So sure. talk about getting involved in that and why you got involved in that? Yeah, yeah. Minority education, minority engineering educational task. Meet uh, a, a meet. chapter. Yeah, meet was a chapter of Nesby, New Jersey Society for Black Engineers, N G N J S B E. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, meet was Rutgers chapter of that. And yeah, that that was. Um, I don't think I remember exactly how I got involved with it. Probably seeing some some flyers and stuff like that around at the school campus, yeah. around campus. Um, and I, I kind of knew that, you know, it's, a, it's definitely a good idea to be involved in an organization. And when you're talking about one that's, you know, involved, that, that has a lot of minorities in it that are also engineers, it's kind of like... correlate to your, your major, which totally, you're trying to get into. Totally, totally. <laughs> Having mentors... Nothing like a resume builder. <laughs> yeah, man. Absolutely. No, knowing that, knowing that you, you, you kind of you need that to stand out. You sure. need that, those, those organizational things on your resume. And then also... Um, yeah, just that was kind of my first um, sort of time frame where I saw the power of having uh, mentors and people that you can look up to that have gone through the things that you've gone through, mm. whether it's a textbook that, you know, is not uh, that they don't need anymore because they finished the class and now we're, you know, rolling up the next level and, or next year and stuff like that. We can, you know, we can hand textbooks off and something like that. To, yeah, nice little community. Action yeah, going on. yeah, yeah. There was a ton of that going on. It was. It was really great, actually. It was, you know, a great group of guys. Yeah, I keep in touch with quite a few of them still. Oh. And they're all doing, you know, the ones that I keep in touch with really great things nowadays. So, yeah. And you also end up getting an internship at Verizon while you was at uh, Rutgers, right? That's right. So how did you right. get into that internship program? Yeah, so that was that was at one of the career fairs. I, um, I ended up meeting... I ended up going to this career fair that was open at, for... Is that at Rutgers? At Rutgers. Mm -hmm. At Rutgers. It was open for... I, I believe either all engineers or maybe it was just um, ECE, electrical computer engineers. I think it was actually that. I think it was a it was a career fair, smaller one. <clears throat> excuse me, opened up only for um, my major, and I remember I remember us having a big test coming up, like either probably I think it was the next day. And so my thought was, okay, there's going to be a lot of people studying for it. So I expected this there to not be a great showing of like a lot of people going to this career fair. Um, but I knew that at the time, I don't know why, how I had this sort of perspective, but I was just like, I, I'm going to definitely go there, even if it's not for the whole time. I'm going to try to find a balance, make sure I'm there, and then obviously put some Study, time in yeah, studying. Of course. And that, that's, that's how I ended up. And, it, it, and to, my, um, not, to my not surprise, I wasn't surprised to see that there were... It wasn't a lot of people there at all. At least when uh, I was there, you strategized. I it. did, bro. I did. I did. It was kind of chess. It was playing checkers. That's right. These guys trying to get like a ninety-six on that uh, that uh, digital logic design test, and I'm over here like I'm gonna get like a seventy on it, but I'm also gonna kind of increase my chip. Yeah, isn't that the ultimate goal? That I mean, forward thinking, man. Yeah, that's it, bro. That's it. And so that's, you spent actually what four years? You gra you graduated from Rutgers, yeah, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then uh, you end up getting a full time job at Rutgers. I mean, uh, Verizon. Verizon. Was it directly afterwards, or did you have that like offer ready by the time you graduated? Yeah. So the way it actually worked, it was kind of interesting. I uh, I was interning at like maybe two or three different positions at Verizon. You know, one after another, from uh, freshman to sophomore summer, all the way till senior year. Mm. And then senior year, I was interning. And then an opening came up, mm. full-time position, doing the same work as a systems and systems integration, or actually that's a later job, a systems uh, uh, technician, systems technician, yeah. yeah. Over from, I was interning in Branchburg and in Jersey City, a position opened up. And a lot of the people that were, you know, I was working with um, in Branchburg said, you know, Kev, this is a position that doesn't open often. And this is one that a lot of people at Verizon really, really want because 
it's a, it's a lot less politics there. It's it's really you get you can get involved with a lot of technology and stuff like that. So it's, it's a highly a, visible job. Yeah, it's a I would I would go as far as yeah. It's it's it wasn't really highly visible. It was okay. like it was more like behind the scenes, but it was highly important. Okay, because without us doing our stuff, then but they the cell knew you were somewhere. important. And Absolutely, you behind the scenes. Yeah, <laughs> Absolutely. that's 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 the best way to say it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and as long as you're doing your job, you get you know you you get um you know notice and stuff like that for mm-hmm. it and everything. Um, but the problem with me was I was, this was my senior year, uh, first semester, this position opened up and it was, you know, kind of opened up around January or so, and I'm expected to graduate in May. So I had to make a decision of whether or not I was going to, you know, finish my degree and not take the position and then see what happens in, in May, um, or take the position, not finish my degree and then choose to, you know, finish this last semester at some point later. Mm. Um, but I was able to sort of finagle my way into an opportunity to do both of taking the position and then my senior year, second semester only had one class and then it had a capstone design class and then it had like six other credits of anything that I wanted to take. Mm. And I was able to leverage those six credits as like a co-op um, and get credit for, you know, a six credit thing while I'm working full time at Verizon and I only have to take one class in person and then sort of schedule my own thing for the capstone design so you were still a student you had a job in january before you graduated <laughs> that's, that's right smooth look man it was <laughs> yo man yeah and and you i can't pay before you leave <laughs> bro and the, the crazy the craziest thing I, I i can smile and laugh about this now because it was like at the time i was I, I was like this is awesome to begin with yeah but then once i graduated and and i started working and stuff like that one of the guys there was like oh you know you might want to consider applying for tuition reimbursement. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm actually considering doing that this this September. I, I'm actually planning to, to get my master's and, you know, I want to, you know, because Verizon offer, offered that and everything. So I was I was already planning for that. He was like, no, 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 I mean... For your bachelor's. Yes, for that last <laughs> semester. And I'm like, no. That's a good hustle, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, there's no way that's going to... hustle that is, yeah. <laughs> I was like, there's no way this is going to work. You know, that, that doesn't seem to make sense that Verizon would be willing to pay me, a, you know, give me a check for some money that I, that I absolutely was not expecting. It's also crazy they give you a job before you even graduate. I know, right? I <laughs> so, know. This, there was you may as well shoot your shot. <laughs> yeah, what, why, why not, right? Yeah. And so I did that. I did just that, apply for it. And I remember, you know, getting a check for that, that I was able to, you know, I think I used that to pay off my car, like, immediately. And then, I, you know, I was kind of, you know, just... I don't want to say ahead of the game, but I, I think just You're a little ahead of the game. I know people that got like graduated, got jobs immediately afterwards. Right. I don't know. I don't know anybody that started before they graduated. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah. And it's hard. It's hard. No, I shouldn't say hard. I, it it has been hard for me sometimes to um, I don't know talk talk about myself and my experiences in the this is like the old version of me, like without sounding pompous mm-hmm. because that's something that i, I the really, podcast here for man yeah ex- <laughs> well, that's, story. that's it man that's exactly right <laughs> and it's not it's just yeah it's just having a conversation so that yeah. that's that's something that i've had to learn for sure especially especially knowing that hey look this podcast like when we're done you know i, I know you're going to promote it I'm, I'm absolutely going to pr- promote it and everything there's students that i have at some of my workshops that i've taught at Rutgers mm. about professional development and stuff and we'll talk a little bit about that later i'm sure um that that will hear what I'm saying right now and keep this in the back of their mind about, oh, I'm going to be a senior next year. Or I'm going to be a junior next year. So I can kind of maybe, you know, kind of figure figure something out similar to this. Yeah. And there are opportunities out there that might not seem seem realistic at the yeah. time. Just and to know that it's an option just opens up your eyes. <laughs> bro, seriously, man, you're not kidding. You are not kidding. So you were at Verizon. You held a few positions over there. Mm-hmm. Um you also got tapped to be in one of their, their leadership programs as well, right? Yeah, yeah. So talk about that. Uh, how'd you feel about that experience itself? Because it had to be a big deal for you at the time, you oh, know, man. getting tapped for that. It was, yeah, it was, it was, it was awesome. It was my my fourth, I think, position in the company was a systems integration engineer, and it was my favorite position, and it was also my one that I performed the best in. Mm. I was sort of like a you know a go to person for a lot of the projects and stuff like that that we were doing. And like really, a natural. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was weird. It was a it was Mozart action. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was yeah, pretty much. It uh-huh. was it was like, you know, it was um it was having to gain the respect from from the really technical people that you're working on these sort of high level projects with. Um and 
sort of none of them are reporting directly to you but you need to be able to somehow influence them and kind of galvanize them to be able to get these projects done not unlike what i guess a project manager you know typically would do right, right. um but this, everybody on the same page yeah meeting minutes you know and your stuff absolutely <laughs> oh yeah exactly that's exactly it man yeah yeah I know and the drill, yeah. You know, yeah, you know the deal. I'm sure you, you work with like some some PMs and stuff, like in your in your role. Yeah, yeah. you do. Right? I ain't so gonna you, shout them out, but yeah, right. <laughs> they, they, y'all ain't y'all ain't getting no shout outs just yet. But y'all yeah, get no shout out here, but. <laughs> But uh, so you, you were there, you got tapped and... Yeah, so for the for the leadership program, I mean, I, I had, you know, kind of set myself up by, by performing well. And I think someone told me about this leadership program. Uh, one of my boys actually did. Yeah, told me about it. And then I brought it up to my manager during a meeting. And she was, you know, she definitely, she hadn't heard about it before. So she said, let me, let me look into it a little bit. And it turned out that like this program, you need to be like nominated for it. And like your I'm manager, sure, yeah. right? It's not just an open for any any one type thing. Your manager and I think it I think it went manager, your director, and then your ED all need to like write a letter of recommendation type thing. So it was really you know You gotta go out the way to recommend you. So yes. You gotta be ready for exactly, that. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's like are they willing to well, I see somebody that's not ready, I'm like, I'm not writing no letter. <laughs> right. That takes time and I can be doing other things with this time. And yeah, I exactly. and, you know, you have to really yeah, really be willing to put the time in and stick your neck out for someone if you think that they're you know someone that deserves it i guess mm -hmm. um so yeah that that was that and then i you know it was like a it was like a i think three month long program where i was still working my regular job but i was able to meet with the rest of the maybe 80 or some odd people that were also in this program a few times a month for like you know trainings mm -hmm. and all these different things and a couple interesting things happened while i was there um one of them was we we we, we were gonna like um, culminate this this leadership program with like a group project. Each group had 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 been assigned some type of like topic, real world topic that Verizon can kind of be can kind of um, you know kind of interact with and, and work with. Yeah. And uh, yeah, each group was assigned one. It was me and like maybe seven or eight other people in my group, and we were all sitting down uh, getting the instructions for this project. And this is after we've only had some interaction with each other. Um, the person up front was like, okay, so one of the first things that I need each group to do is I need each group to identify who's going to be the group leader. And the group leader is going to be the person who's like the liaison with the business uh, leader, for lack of a better term, that's going to be assigned to your group that you could ask questions about. And yeah, so everyone's sure, asking sure. questions. And so at, when that happened, and at this point I knew that like, even though we're all in this leadership program, there was, there was always eyes watching us and seeing what we do and seeing how we act during the cocktail hour and all these different things kind of right. happening. Um, there was like an optional um, professional headshot day type thing. And I remember, I think either hearing or, or talking to someone who was in charge of the program. They were like, yeah, everyone doesn't have to get this. But in reality, the reason we're doing this headshot thing is so that we, we can have like a database we had to like, I think, hold up our name too. So mm -hmm. it's like a picture on my face with the name. And I just imagine them having like a room somewhere in the back of like, oh yeah, I saw that guy right there who is, you know, Kevin Allen or this guy right. over here who was doing X, Y, and Z. The little war room they got. Exactly. It's exactly. Like <laughs> that's, that's exact. I, I don't know if it's true or not, but I, I totally. It's like the cry mobs movie. Yeah. It's like, nah, he's in charge and he's underneath him. <laughs> That's exactly. I, 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 but in a good way. No, yeah, 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 man. I can't, I can't, you know, corroborate that or not. I don't know if it's definitely true, but I'm like, <laughs> we had to like hold it up, and I think, I think they made us do one of the, one of the, you know, side profile ones. Oh, what is it? This one. Yeah, not taking mug shots. Yeah, I was like, whoa. I was like, all right, this is pretty intense not right here. Facial recognition programs. Out yeah, there. yeah. I was like, should I be doing this or I don't know. But um, but my heart was beating when they were when they were talking about this leader for the groups, mm -hmm. and because I, I I naturally I felt like oh this is whoever the leaders are going to be like the you know the main focus for yeah, the, yeah. for the project, but I didn't want to you know go in and be like oh I think I, I would like to do it or whatever I just wanted to sit back and see how everything planned you know kind of played out. Sure. But it happened where right when we were done, the one dude who was who was in the service he does he was like well he had a deep voice. He's like, well, I don't know, but I'm just, I'm just gonna nominate. I think Kevin should be the, and I'm, and again, at this point, we had only talked a few times or whatever, yeah. and then a few other guys, yeah, yeah, I think that would be good. And I was like, that, that made me feel great, yeah. as you could imagine. I'm like, whatever I did in this, in this small subset of time, gave them Precious some type guys. of, yeah, yeah, confidence. Cream that, of the crap out there. Exactly. So like, this guy will lead us to the promised land. So yeah. I want to nominate him, and I was just like. 
I was like, oh, yeah, I, I don't remember what I said, but I probably was mad happy. But uh-huh. I was also like, yeah, okay, I, I'd be down to, you know, just kind of keeping it cool, I guess, yeah. and stuff. But um, yeah, that was that was how that culminated. That'd be a cool feeling though, right? It was amazing, bro. Yeah. It was that was like you know, there's been like little pockets of time where um, feedback that I get from people, um, you know, whether it's candid or from someone directly or indirectly or whatever, sure. kind of helped me understand how how I'm perceived, um, just in general. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something very important. Like when you're just in general, like if you respect someone or if you're if you really look up to someone or whatever the case is it's it's a really good thing to to let them know Mm -hmm. and then conversely especially with i guess friends and stuff like that but conversely if there's i I don't know anything ever to talk about with regards to relationship whatever the time whatever the case may be it's it's i think i just think important to be open and direct with people because that stuff really can help people out yeah, in the yeah, long run. Honest and candid, yep. That's key, man. So you I know? try to be, man. Asshole, but it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> it's all gravy, right? Exactly. So you did go through some trials and tribulations over at Verizon. Now, Verizon did have a, a, a strike going at one point, right? Yeah, and yeah. And then you was being overloaded with additional work. So oh, talk man. about that time, because... Weren't you hanging up on those poles as well at one point? I was, ha- bro, man. That was that was not saying uh, like hanging, but you was up on. <laughs> I was climbing, yeah, climbing the poles. We we had a yeah a strike thing going on, and uh, the timing of it couldn't have been worse for me because I was uh, I was planning for me, me and Jess were planning for our wedding at the time, and we we ended up I ended up you know getting. Cause I think I don't know if everyone was involved with it who who volunteered. I had volunteered years prior, and actually the strike never happened. My name was still on the list oh, for the next round, and at the time so I wasn't in the mugshot. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, "Come on, man!" You're like, "This guy's ready." Yeah, yeah. I think he's ready for it. Three years later, he's more stronger. He can climb these climb these poles and everything. Yeah, that must have been in the fine print. Anytime exactly. A strike, you'll be in there. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. And at the time, too, my dad, you know, he still does. He works for, um, for Port Authority. So he's in a union. And when I originally kind of um, okayed it, I talked to him about it. And I, it, it, was, um, it was an interesting thing because. You kind of on the other side of that? Yes. Mm-hmm. On the other side. And he's on this side doing his work. So he had, you know, his opinions on it and stuff. He, of course, understood, you know, my perspective of the career and everything like that. But. It was something that I, I wasn't really, excuse me, aware at the time of like of how it looks and stuff like that, right? right. Um, but I did I did what I had to do. I went down to Virginia, I think, for training for a week, and then that was fun. I remember the food being amazing down there. Down in Virginia, breakfast. Yeah, I think Never it was been, but... DC, DC or Virginia. I mean, yeah, maybe one, the DMV? one of the two. It's DMV good. area, yeah. one of them three states. Just lump them all together. Exactly. Man. It's all this. It's shout, out all this yeah. <laughs> shout out to DMV. Yeah, shout out to DMV down there. Right. Right. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so did the training and then we did, we did some pole climbing, uh, training down there along with the actual, um, the technology training, all that kind of stuff. And the pole climbing down there, it's like, you know, it's bright and sunny day. And it's like, the pole is like, it's like sturdy and everything like that. So we can kind of figure it Always out. Always when you practice it, right? Bro, man. <laughs> when I, yo, and it was so weird. Cause like we, you know, we were told like we, when, when we got back, we were going to be teamed with a, a, you know, seasoned person to kind of sit with them for a few days or whatever. But it was just complete, like the most hectic thing you can imagine because mm-hmm. the seasoned people were the ones that were on strike. So yeah. there's no one that was seasoned there except for the people that had started a week earlier. So I'm out there with the dude that started a week one earlier. seasoning. <laughs> exactly. I was like, is this guy, does this guy count as being seasoned? I don't. Like, I don't know. I don't know if that's actually... trying to keep y'all calm down there. Right. That's, what it was. that's exactly right. And I'm just, and I, I just, I remember, you know, vividly, like when I was out with this dude and I remember seeing, this was the first time seeing a live action, someone climbing one of the poles and this, and we, we have all this equipment that, you know, basically allows us to be able to climb the pole. And if we let go of our hands, we're, we're still attached. Cause it's like these little beams on the poles and stuff. Right. We have this like harness thing or whatever. Yeah, we'll make, sure, make sure you get it right. Cause. Exactly. You don't want to, <laughs> yeah, man, you don't want, and this, this guy. And so apparently I guess a lot, some people, you know, I don't know if this is common knowledge. I, I don't know. It doesn't really matter, I guess. But yeah, some people don't, don't use that stuff because it takes time to put that on and everything like that. I guess if you're really seasoned, you're just like, you want to get the job done quicker. So you just literally climb up the pole without any protection. Mm-hmm. And this dude being one week season, not real season, he just like, he was like, all right, I'm going to go climb this pole. 
And I'm thinking he's putting this stuff on. He just like walked up to it and just climbed it like a like a monkey, like yeah, mad quick. Young Spider Man. I'm just like I was like I don't think that's safe, man. And at, at that moment, I was like, all right, anything this guy says, like advice that he gives me, I was like, <laughs> I'm not listening. I was like, yo, this guy right I here. Like I'm putting my joint on, right? Right. Yeah, I'm right. Sorry, dog. There's no, there's no way it's gonna take a little longer. <laughs> it's gonna take a bit long, but you know, one of the one of the I guess real awesome things about that or I should say two about that experience. It lasted about maybe I think two or three months or something. I was working like maybe 80 hours a week. Um, you got pay, overtime or pay was, okay. pay was really good. So I was able to, you know, bank some money for the wedding that we were planning for and stuff. Um, but the two things were, I had like, a, I had the company vehicle. And so I had freedom to kind of just go on the tablet and look at these different jobs, and like go to Bridgewater or go out here to Bedminster or go to Somerset and go to this Chinese restaurant or go to this customer's house who's getting a new file installation. Uh, and it was like having the freedom and just driving around, listening to some music in the car or whatever throughout the day, and then interacting with the customer and seeing, you know, one customer who's really sad about their their uh, their um, service not working or something and being mm -hmm. able to help them with that and seeing them excited. These were these were two things, like one having the freedom of not like sitting in front of the computer type thing all day. Yeah, and then that customer satisfaction experience. And yeah. Exactly, man. That really kinda made me feel during that time I was like, all right, this is this is what I'm what I'm here for. Something that's that's interacting with people as a you know, as a forefront of of whatever it is that I'm doing. Right. So I think that that definitely put things into motion about, you know, kind of set me up for what I expected to happen next. Um, and then I'll, I'll let you continue. Yeah. I got some well, more. Real quick, you, yeah. do you have Verizon at your house right now? Files? We we are just having files installed in the community. So once it's there, I'm absolutely going to switch over from Comcast right. over to them. So you're going to be your own customer support? Exactly. <laughs> I'll be able to handle handle it all and everything. But specifically, the reason I'm doing it is because their their signal speed is just so much better than what Comcast can offer and for a better price. So I'm just like... Wait, I'm wait. I'm I gotta believe you on that, so I'm glad we got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now it's not even because I play, you know, Smash Brothers and stuff. So I, I, I need that low latency when I play online. I can't be having Andrew Kim and McNaughton and Brian, all those guys, Roger a little With bit. High speeds. They know what I'm talking about. They know what I'm talking about. If I'm missing anyone out there, Smash Brothers crew, I apologize. And then, um, so also, I guess Verizon started uh, doing this down period. They uh, they started having layoffs, right? They did. They did. So you end up getting laid off from the job so talk about did you hear about the layoffs happening before you got laid off or how did it happen was it like waves of layoffs because yeah yeah it was it, it um it we definitely heard that the rumors to start with we heard that okay sometime in the fall of this would have been 2018 2018 it was the, 2018 what are we in now no 2017 i'm okay. sorry we're in 2019 now fall of 2017 my bad um, it's all a blur. It's all a blur now. No doubt. We do instant fact checkers. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Thanks, okay. for, thanks for calling. Yeah. Call, calling me out in a productive way. Cause that, that would have derailed the whole story. Cause you know, something else happened in 2018. I would have had to backtrack and it just would have been really bad. Um, but yeah, 2017, like earlier in the year, there were rumors about, okay, sometime in the fall, there's going to be massive layoffs. Mm -hmm. And then as the weeks and months went on, it was like, okay, not sometime in the fall, but specifically it was a day in November. It was the, the week before Thanksgiving, one of the days there. Ah, oh, man, so, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. Right, right, right before. And so, and, and, then, and then even as we're getting closer, it's like, oh, okay. So, you know, rumors are, oh, yeah, every single conference room in the, in the Baskin Ridge office is, is, um, is booked on that day. So there's going to be a lot of people that are losing, you know, losing jobs and stuff. And I remember at the time, I was uh, I was working in my my position right after the previous one I was mentioning. I had gotten promoted um, after that leadership program to to main to main headquarters. So I was working there for a while, for a little less than a year at that point, and I was kind of like not in love with what I was doing, mm -hmm. and I was but I also wasn't ready. I wasn't going to be like you know okay with getting laid off uh, if if my name was on the list. But I also knew that what I was doing was. I mean, was trivial mm -hmm. and wasn't was, satisfying for you. Wasn't satisfying. I would say was trivial and wasn't really produced. I, I wasn't producing that like anything significant for the company, mm -hmm. like I was previously, where yeah, it was very, very important. Yeah. So I was like, I could totally. Verizon's not going to skip a beat if this not not if I'm if I leave, but if this role is no longer here, right? Th th it's not even going to be anything at all. That that that's so you acknowledged that early, right? I did, okay. I did. So so when I walked in the office that day, I remember uh, walking past my boss at the time, and he had a he had a, a suit on, 
and he never wears suits. Damn. So I was like, I was like, this guy's about to lay some people off yeah. today. It's about to go yeah. down today. And so I'm red like, flags on deck, huh? Yo, man, I saw this. I, saw, I was like, yo, life hack, anybody up. out there? If all your conference <laughs> rooms are booked, your boss got a suit on. <laughs> Something's happening. That's it, man. You know something's <laughs> about to go on. This is not. This is not normal. This is not not a normal normal day. Pay attention to those signs out there. Absolutely, man. So yeah, I went. You know, got my breakfast. I remember I had like a green smoothie and some oatmeal, some egg white cups. You remember really what happened that day? I do. Vividly. I do. And then I'm sitting there, and then I got an email, a meeting invite, for it was like 9:15 at the time. The meeting invite was for 9:30 to 9:45. And I've told the story many times to some you know other people and stuff. But essentially, no words in the in the text of the of the email. No no, no words in there. And it, and in the word in the in the in the subject, it just said it didn't even say the word meeting. It just said MTG, and it was for 15 minutes. I was like, okay. So my heart sank at that moment. I was yeah. like, man, this is like the end of my time. Yeah. Rising is about to end unceremoniously, yeah. and I'm about. So I, I remember call, I remember calling Jess, and you know I told. I, yeah, uh, I don't. I think I may have texted her first. Okay. Before and I called her after the meeting, but I texted her, and then went to the meeting. I actually, I was like, I'm, I'm still gonna. I just heated my oatmeal up, so I'm still gonna like bring. I brought the food into the meeting. Uh, as well, yeah. I was like, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> that boy. <laughs> right, right. So I was just, I was eating there, but I was, you know, respectful. I respected the guy and stuff. So you know, he was, he was visibly, you know, he was like uncomfortable as anyone. This that's is your it. direct manager. With my Sue. direct manager. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He, you know he kind of was uncomfortable with the with the idea of having to you know deliver this news just like i'm sure everyone was yeah. um but he you know shared the news with me gave me the paper and basically said you know um you you have until the end of the year and if you're able to find a job at verizon it's still in the company at the end before the end of the year mm -hmm. then then you can say otherwise you're you're out you know you're, yeah, you're your, your position has been eliminated position has been eliminated okay. yeah they got rid of mine and, and our whole department got got rocked really badly actually um so that's how that went called jess and she first thing she said you know how are you doing and i was just like i think i'm you know i think i'm all right you know it's kind of the initial shock of it kind of subsided mm -hmm. i got got into a conference room and just kind of got my mind together and stuff a lot of people were going home that day when they got the news and stuff um and i was you know just looking up the different resources and all that kind of stuff but then i remember there was a there was a um a african-american sort of unofficial uh, networking event, Verizon networking event going on that same day that mm -hmm. I was already planned on going to. It's a weird day to have it, I guess. It was weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was planned well in advance. Yeah, I'm sure. So I think yeah. it was kind of like just coincidental that it was there and it was the first one that I got that I got wind about and invited to. So I was already planned on going and um, I, but I also wanted to just go home. I was like, I, I just want to kind of decompress or whatever. But I ended up staying in the office and, and staying there. And I ended up meeting some amazing people, uh, several of which who I still am, still am in contact today. One is the the chief security officer of Verizon at mm -hmm. the time. One was a is a um, the senior hmm, senior ex, senior executive executive director, I think. Yeah, SVP. Mm -hmm. senior, or I don't know his exact title. He was a high up in in human resources. Okay. Um, who I also keep in touch with today. And then the other one is. Um, <laughs> Yikes. Hey, <laughs> I saw it happening in slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> Drop my phone. It's all good. All good. All good. It's all good, guys. Um, the other one was uh, was one level under the CEO of the company. He he headed up this department called Verizon Partner Solutions, where they kind of work with other smaller companies. Right. And it was a bunch of guys to know. <laughs> totally, bro. And I'm there, like you know, just getting the news, but talking to them, just like I'm talking to you, like kind of unfazed with it because i knew that no matter what happened next i was confident in my in myself at this point that like something is gonna work out for me whatever it is and it turned out that one of those dudes was looking for someone just like me um at the time because he had just left a boot camp for this technology that i had some expertise in and so I, we ended up talking he said hit me up tomorrow which i did and he ended up pulling some strings and creating a headcount for a position before the end of the year that is almost unheard of. That doesn't really happen. It was a hiring freeze at the time. So you really need to have some clout 
Yeah, yeah. He had some, uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> some pull over yeah, there. Yeah, to say the least. Uh, so that that's how that went down. Um, I kind of forgot the original question. It kind of got lost in the story. Now I was talking about the whole layoff process. And yes. I okay. want to know what your conversation with Jess was like. Like, how were you feeling? Yeah. Like, uh, everything that was going through your brain at the time. Like, yeah, yeah. It was, it did was. Did you just, feel betrayed at all from like Verizon? That the, like, all the work that you had put in, or not really, or just a job? At that time, I didn't because there was, it was like me doing this job for a while. And I was, you know, I'm always reminded of having my MBA and stuff and, and knowing like what companies, what their goals are, right? Mm -hmm. Increasing stakeholder value. And I'm like, all right, what I'm doing here is not increasing stakeholder value. Therefore, this position doesn't make sense to be here right now, nor does other ones that I kind of see just from what I understand that they do and stuff. And so I knew, I knew the writing, I expected the writing to be on the wall. Um, so I didn't, I can't say that I felt betrayed. I think what kind of helped me out a little bit was just knowing that, I had a little inkling of wanting to make a drastic change anyway at the mm -hmm. time. And so it kind of happened at a time where I was I was equipped and, and ready to make that change. Um, but what, you know, God is good because what he ended up kind of orchestrating was me being able to stay at Verizon because this gentleman was able to create a position. Sure. And now going into 2018, I have a new position in the company that I was able to um, make more of an impact, enjoy more. Um, and then, you know, spent, spend about 10 months there and then the following year, right? So now we're talking one year after I got involuntarily laid off, there was a, a voluntary severance package right. that the company offered a large number of employees. And now I have a, you know, one of my coworkers sitting But I think they me. were actually aiming for the older people, I would think. They were. Like the younger guys. They were, bro. <laughs> they were. I, I, you, took a, you thought about it like, hmm. <laughs> it didn't, you know, Kim, it didn't take long at all at this point, because now I'm sitting there like, all right, this package is a lot more incentivizing than this involuntary one last year. And now I already had started some of this, you know, tutoring stuff on the side at this point over the summer. Mm. And so I already kind of saw, you know, the the idea of, of what this can become. And so I remember I was sitting right right across from my coworker, just like this, right beside him. He's like, hey, hey Kev, you know, um, later on uh, the, today, we're all going to be getting an email about this package. And he told me a little bit about what he heard about it. He had, you know, I guess the inside information or whatever. And I'm, have those guys on deck. you need that, man. <laughs> Literally, when he told me that, I'm just I, I, I just felt like, you know, just something lifted off my shoulders. Because at this point, I was I was working at a job that, you know, paid me tremendously well had a ton of flexibility you know my boss had a great relationship with him he worked from the virginia office so i only saw him a handful of times mm -hmm. and it wasn't stressful because i was i was i knew what i was doing at, at the position but it was not satisfying at all and it was it's weird because you have these three check marks next to your job but you're just not satisfied it's like oh go find some satisfaction outside of work because you have flexibility so you can do x y and z and stuff mm -hmm. um without having to be overwhelmed and i certainly thought about that but for me at that time it was it was like a conviction. It was like, it, I, I guess I felt not. I, I shouldn't say bad about about you know doing something. Or I, I guess I guess I felt really really strongly about finding a way to make my passion something that can be that I can monetize. Right. And at that time, I didn't know exactly what that meant. I had some ideas, but you know, I, I knew that if I had you know this this sum of money coming from the company and some time off to be able to put into it then I, I, I had a strong belief that I'd be able to capitalize on it. Right. So you, you, you was looking for your passion. You're looking for something more fulfilling in your life at the time. Mm -hmm. So tell me this. You, you had a great job, uh, a lot of flexibility. You, you, you were involuntarily laid off. Mm -hmm. Now you choose to voluntarily take the severance package. What was that conversation like with your wife? Because mm -hmm. that had to be kind of an intense conversation with Jess as far as like, Hey, I'm gonna take this leap of faith and take this package. Yeah, and kind of start doing my own thing. Yeah, man. Um, no I, specifics, obviously, but <laughs> yeah, no, I got you. No, it's a, it's a it's a great question. I there was there was me and Jess have you know I guess a relationship where they, I kind of ex, expected her to, her to react to it the way that she actually did, which is to say she you know we talk all the time, of course, just like you know husband and wives you know will she she was very aware about what's been going on in my mind for years at this point so she knew it, it wasn't a surprise that i that i've reached the point where it makes sense to actually make this change so she's you know i would imagine has been mentally preparing for when the time is right to make the change as well um so the conversation it was 
it was organic. It was normal. It wasn't anything at all, you know, knowing my wife really well. It wasn't anything that I expected to be a difficult conversation to have. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm sure it like it would be in other relationships, depending on the circumstance, right? Oh, if you have sure. children or if you have other things or if you're you know if you're if your significant other honestly doesn't believe in you yeah. right yeah. like oh you're Those losing facts, this yeah. that's 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 the truth right yeah. so i i think i think when it comes to i can see somebody coming home right now like no motherfucker you're not quitting that right. job that's not happening <laughs> that is not happening at all you're, you're actually going to be staying there for a few more years and you're going to retire there when you're 62 yeah. and then we're going to go to florida gray. no but yeah. i think that y'all had that conversation yeah you're totally able to talk to each other and everything ended up being cool y'all y'all worked through it and then you took the package now talk about the good stuff now like yeah how did you find your passion and like what did you do when after like you figured out like you know math was your thing and then mm-hmm. prof- your professional development towards that yeah yeah definitely so i guess this whole thing kind of started maybe two jobs ago from the pos- or three jobs ago from the position we're talking about now i was working in bedminster and i was doing a job at verizon i was like testing phones and making sure they're safe for the network and stuff like yeah. that and that became very repetitive over time. I'm sure. And it, it was, yeah, it was, it was like, all right, this is kind of dumb. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing doing here right now. This is not really, you know, exciting. I did a lot more intense studies at school that I, I, I could apply to, you know, what yeah, I'm doing and stuff. A little stuff. more but brain power. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. But, uh, but it, you know, it was, it was paying the bills. It was, a, it was a, you know, good job at the time and stuff. But that's, I guess, when I started thinking about, about these different things, about, like, me being a really, uh, I won't say overly, but just a really compassionate person, someone who cares about other people um, for as long as I can remember now. That's what that's what drives me is helping other people mm. and and seeing them um, seeing them happy, seeing other people happy and and me having something to do with it, whether it's, you know, like today, for example, just having a conversation. I, I was with my my, um, my mom taking her to treatment. And, um, you know, there's people there that are that are in all different levels of, you know, emotional sort of situations going on. Sure. But, you know, just me being there and just talking. There was a lady I was talking to who was a teacher for 40 years and she's, you know, no, going Kevin through. Kevin would talk to any and everybody. Man, you know. it was I wish I wish there was a I wish there was a camera. It was a camera there because she. Yeah, it was a, just a real great conversation and you know, almost got a little weird because she was like sitting and she was like. She was like, yeah, she was with her, with her husband. Her husband wants to like go sit in the other side. She's like, I, I actually want, I want to, I want to talk to to this young man a little bit more. She was like, you're, very, what she said, she said, you're, you're very pleasant, and you know, I don't like many people, but I like you. <laughs> I, was, I was like, well, thank you. You know, I didn't. I was like, well, I appreciate that. You know, this compliment being, right there. That was yeah. I said, like, you don't like many people, so I'm one of the rare people you like. Something I did must have, you know, given you some. I'm sure she lived uh, quite a long time too. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> teacher for 40 years, and I'm like, you Top must have come across, right? And she's a teacher, so all the students she's come across <laughs> and the parents and stuff. That probably has something to do with her attitude too. I'm so. sure. Um, she's like desensitized. She's yeah. she's seen the worst, but um, but yeah, just uh, just those types of things, man. And yeah. get and just just you know, she she, she walked by as as they were leaving, and I'm on the phone doing some doing some work, I think at the time. And she's like trying to make I'm I'm ducking down, but yeah, trying to make sure that that I that I see her so she could say bye and stuff like that. And it was just really sweet. It was really yeah, sweet. Yeah. Um, and a lot of these types of experiences, you know, happen. This, this is you know just even yesterday another similar visit. My grandmother in the grandmother in the hospital, and the lady next to her was um, sweetest old lady. You know, you can imagine she had like an accent accent from down south. Turns out she was from Texas. She was like the daughter of a, of a pastor in Texas. Mm. And, and you know, we're there to visit grandma. And she's like, she's like, oh, I, I can't do the accent. But she's like, oh, um, she's like, I thought, you, I thought you guys were here to visit me. And I'm like, and we're, it's like a little un- uncomfortable. She's like, yeah, no one comes to visit me. And we're like, bit, oh, yeah. you know, I'm sorry. You know, we're, we're, we're here for, you know, all you guys, blah, 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 for both of you. And then, and then we're talking to grandma for a little bit. We brought her some food and stuff, some groceries. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, she's like, do you guys have any sweets? And then, <laughs> and then, I, and then I was I like, some Snickers over there. Yeah, she wanted, she wanted, and I, it so happened that you know my aunt had, had bought me. Yeah, she wanted something, something that they don't give her there, I guess, right? <laughs> anything, my, yeah. Anything. My my aunt bought me like a little pack of cookies. We went to the, the store earlier that day. 
And and they were, they were like, oh, Kevin, what about those cookies? Yeah, I was like, oh, absolutely. I, I kind of wanted them all, but I was like, all right, you know, I'll, I'll hook her up real quick. Yeah, so I gave her one, and she started, she's like, mm, these are these are so, she was like so appreciative, and she yeah. was like, her personality, I haven't met anyone like that before. It was like a like a character on TV or something like that, right? <laughs> it was yeah. just so funny. Um, but yeah, just that that type of thing, man, right. that, that type so you, of thing. You want to see people happy, you want to contribute to that happiness. Contribute to the happiness and, and, and being, being myself and doing it, not being fake or something like yeah. that, right? Definitely um, don't be fake. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, let's, let's, let's not be fake, keep guys. Let's right. keep that 100 Special real quick. Special Wi-Fi show. Exactly. That's, <laughs> that's important. We got to we gotta keep things we gotta keep things serious on here. Keep, well, not serious. We'll keep things truthful. Yeah. But um, Or real is the word I was looking for, actually. But but yeah, so so around that time, it was like, all right, so I could leave this position and try to find work that, that's fulfilling, like becoming a teacher is something I actually thought about. Um, but I ended up not doing that because I was like, I, I worked hard to get to where I was at the company at the time. And it's going to be a pay cut and all these different things. So I was like, let me start volunteering. So I like joined Big Brothers, Big Sisters and started kind of getting involved with these, excuse me, different organizations that are that are about helping people. Yeah. So that's that's kind of how it all started. And then, you know, little by little kind of honing in on exactly what element of helping people is something that I can see myself doing and I really enjoy doing well. I love math mm -hmm. um, and people need help with math. And a lot of people hate math and don't understand math. Right. And students are. It's a necessary evil out there, though. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can't I can't agree. I don't even man. necessarily call it evil. Right. I, I just I, lo I just I just love it, man. I just love when did you fall in love with it back this elementary, just growing up. You just love math. I think uh, I think one year in middle school, maybe fifth or maybe sixth grade into seventh grade, sixth grade. I probably was like in the regular math class and then. I imagine I did really well. I don't even remember this explicitly, but something happened where in seventh grade I was in honors math. Mm. And I remember people, oh, Kev, it, yeah. yeah, they were like, oh, Kev, you were in, I was like, I, was like, I don't know, I must have done, you know, I, I don't know. You know I must exceptional have, work. Yeah. yeah, I must have done some exceptional work on that, on that placement <laughs> test, I guess. And then from there, I guess, is where it kind of started. I kind of came into my own on the subject. And, you know, that's part of the reason why going into, going into engineering and stuff, just so, problem solving and being able to, you know, get things together in that subject. So you like math? This is it. This is how I'm gonna help people. Yeah, yeah. The year later, after I started thinking about that, I, I started kind of, kind of brainstorming of how to merge the two, and the tutoring thing came up as a, as a sort of, you know, obvious choice of, of something to, to kind of explore a little further. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, my, my sister-in-law is a teacher, and I, my first student that I worked with um, was a student that she had been tutoring in English mm -hmm. at the time. Her name is Natalie, and I worked with her on math, and she was my very first student at the library that I started, and then little by little made some connections. It was like another teacher that, that tutored at the same library who kind of, you know, she was um, looking, not looking, but I guess listening to me, you know, kind of seeing how I con conduct myself and stuff. So I actually need to hit her up. I haven't talked to her in a while. Um, because yeah, I don't, I don't tutor at that library anymore. I'm just just putting a parking a note here for myself to remember to do it. Um, <laughs> don't worry, you listen back. You're like, ah, yeah, yeah I, mean, I still I do, gotta do that. I do gotta text her. I do gotta text her. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so she's gave she's uh, handed me some clients. She's a teacher herself, so she has a lot of students. That's that cool. Yeah, it, it really really worked out. And then just kind of I guess snowballed a little bit, right? You got you got word of mouth kind of going on, and me being this all pro bono, right? You're just helping kids for actually no. So at this time, at this time, I was I was charging, but I didn't know what to charge. I was like, you know, talking to my sister uh, in law about what she charged the young lady, and um, and I was like, okay, that that works. I'm just trying to get some experience. So it was literally that, and then same with the the teacher at the at the library. It was like, you know, hey, you know, what do you charge your clients, or what do you think? Kind of getting advice from them because I didn't know yeah. what that space was like. What do you think is fair? Yeah, what's what's, what's gonna exactly? What's, what's gonna work? <laughs> for both of us here right and so that was that was that so that that kind of started the i guess the first year and then as things start moving in the direction and kind of honing in on certain things just started getting basically took the took the let's say 10 months or so now um of since leaving verizon so the the severance package um my company my tenure with the company ended this past december mm -hmm. so i have from january till now to do a lot of different things, like get experience. I substitute taught at, at uh, Rutgers Prep mm -hmm. to get some experience there. Um, you know, built the website. Got Was my, it a specific math topic or like what part of math? At Rutgers Prep? Yeah. So actually that was more, it was more of a getting myself into the classroom type of a thing. It was like, I'm able to substitute in, in anything STEM related is what mm -hmm. I communicated to them. 
um so they kind of had me in at first they were like you know they had me in um just different math in classes in yeah here's here's the worksheets and it was it was kind of just disseminating work it wasn't really teaching stuff but if they had questions i was i was excited to be able to work work through problems with them and stuff but then things kind of went off the rails a little bit they were like i was like okay so what you know what am i what am i subbing today i shouldn't say went off the rails but i guess <laughs> I, I was i was willing to just be there just to be there whatever they needed right. need help with so I was, was, um, that was. I'm assuming that was paid too, then, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Girl, they okay. they pay you, you know, per day and stuff on that. Um, but I was like, I, I'd sub for like a photo, Photoshop, not Photoshop, photography class, mm. and like an art class another day. So just different things, which I was fine with. I was like, this is cool. I'm Something just, different. yeah. I was like, I got my, you know, I'm, I'm good. I can interact with the students, and that 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 kind of helped me realize that. Um, you know, it helped me, uh, you know, yeah, realize for sure and kind of make certain that this, that being around students and, and working with them is in this type of capacity is something I can see myself doing as well, yeah. rather than only the one on one that I was doing at the time. Um, it was touching your soul at the time. Yeah, <laughs> totally, it still bro. Is, I guess it absolutely still is, man. I look forward to like, like last year when it snowed certain days, you know, as a child, you're like, oh, you know, snow day, I get to miss school. But like when it snowed, I, I know I had like two students that day I'm like man like not even for the money but I was like kind of sad that I, I was like, looking forward to work with them right and these types of little things that happen for me are kind of they might have been playing Fortnite though <laughs> <laughs> it's quite possible it's quite possible man it's a popular game what can I say <laughs> so you got you got your joy you realized math was it so you started your business came as Kevin's mentoring tutoring services got it right this so, time yeah I got it right <laughs> good job good job so how, talk about the genesis of that. How did you come up with the name, the logo, the branding, the marketing? Yeah, yeah. So I, I was fortunate enough to have um, a, a mentor of mine, uh, David. David O is his name. He's an entrepreneur himself. Uh, he's a graphic designer. He used to work for Johnson and Johnson, mm -hmm. and you know left there. And now he he does graphic design work for big companies, for small businesses, for nonprofits. And he also teaches like a graphic design related class at Rutgers, like mm -hmm. as an as an adjunct. So he How he's is been, this guy like 40, 50, 60? He's probably in his forties. Okay. Yep. He's probably yeah, I think he's in his forties. Real real cool, real cool. I'll introduce you guys. I mean, I was actually gonna mention him when you were talking about the logo and stuff for you, because mm -hmm. he he's incredible at what he does. Um so yeah, go check him out. I'll talk to him, yeah. Uh, inkroots.com. Inkroots.com is his website. So I I'll throw that out there. That, but yeah. Let's go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um so yeah, so he, I had some conversation with him on the phone just leading up and he, he was, um, he, I met with him for dinner one time at, at Delta's in New Brunswick, shout out to Delta's. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we, he, at the end of this conversation, he let me know that he's really excited about what I'm doing and he wants to put me into his pro bono work that he sometimes does for nonprofits, even though my company is not a nonprofit. Um, and I was, you know, understandably extremely excited about that yeah, I'm right sure, i'm like I'll take all that right absolutely <laughs> i think i might have started tearing up a little bit because i got really i was like yeah when them thug tears come down thug tear, it was just one it was one thug back up. right right <laughs> i just yeah i was just like wow that's this is like this is pretty incredible that's that especially you know, for somebody so experienced in that field you know exactly to help you out. not just so not i shouldn't say just but not someone starting out someone who had who's had years and is established mm -hmm. so that was that was huge so so yeah, he um, he ended up helping me out. He designed the lo different logos for me with some different sort of um, uh, just not justifications, but reasonings or explanations of what the logos meant. All of them were awesome, but I ended up selecting. I f kind of fell in love with my my logo. You guys can check it at the <laughs> website. My website is kevintutoring.com. Mm -hmm. um, that I'll probably say a few more times before yeah, the end of the session. Plugging it, just plugging keep away, plugging it. Um, but yeah, so, so it's a, it's a logo that has a K in it. It has an M in it. It has like a X for multiplication and angles. And it, mm -hmm. it's very simple though. It has all those things kind of intertwined, nice which I, point. yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah kind of, good. thank you, man. Yeah. kind of fell in love with it right away. Um, so we tweaked that a little bit and then, you know, he helped me make my first flyer. The seriously math can make sense and I can help. And that like tagline, I was like, yo, this is actually before it, it has something different before it says seriously math doesn't have to suck i can help <laughs> and when I, it's a little intense that's yeah. a little intense i was like well i'm trying to mark this a little to, listerine flavor <laughs> for you <laughs> so i, I calm it down the scope let's yeah let's take it one notch one notch lower but i was really i was like all right, i i i wasn't overwhelmed with it but i, I was like thinking of it a lot like i i, I want to think of something perfect to put there so i was you know talking to jess and kind of yeah doing a little focus group with just us two trying to figure it out and stuff and and then the math can make sense i can help came up and i was like all right that's that's the one right there we're gonna right. go with that 
Um, so yeah, he's been tremendous in helping. And one of the things that he told me on the phone, which resonated with me a lot, he said that when he first started his, his business, he said he was doing a lot of pro bono work to get his name out there. And then even when he was with starting to get pretty established, he was still, um, you know, like doing stuff for really cheap for people that he knew and stuff like that. Um, even though, and then he started feeling in, in his gut kind of like, excuse me, he still want, wants to do a great job with what he's doing, but now he has a whole bunch of different projects that he's doing and he's not getting compensated the way that a normal person doing this type of work would get. Yeah. So he told me about like the first time that he did the research and found out what is his, what is his service worth? And he put a price point to it. And he told me about the first time that someone signed the contract. It was a, a company that he was working with. And, and they signed the contract. They were willing to pay this much money to this individual for the, the service he was providing. And after the fact, once he provided that service, they were extremely elated with how everything came out. And he's, you know, he told me about looking in the mirror and, and like realizing at that moment, like he's, he has something that other people could benefit from and other people can and are willing to pay for. And that really resonated with me because, you know, once I got my website up, once I got my company being, um, legitimate legal you know with with it being um got an llc, LLC exactly yeah. all that's a registering with the state and all that and um having the business cards and and even even not, not even just all that stuff but also having a, a a service that's not that's not just um math tutoring but it's math tutoring and it's kind of morphed into something that i'm tweaking it very often right. right so it's not it's not the same thing that students are getting every single time so i'm providing something to students and to parents that is is really valuable right and i'm sure that's what the mentoring services come in <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah yeah the mentoring working with students being a, a you know african-american young man who's who's you know passionate about about education and stem specifically mm. it's a it's a commodity as i've learned it's not there's not very many people that have all those things that that, that they're doing mm. and when you talk about a minority student for example not not to say that it matters so much of what type of student you're working with but specifically my minority students that i'm working with right now um it's i can see in them that them seeing me be the one that's teaching them is so different it's than different effect, the stuff yeah. that they've had the experience they've had prior to that mm. so that's that's definitely a huge thing but what i was going to say about like that that note that that david mentioned to me um it resonated because after having all these things kind of starting to line up with the business i had to come up i had to come up with a price point mm -hmm. that was um did you have to think long and hard about that one i did i had to do a lot of research mm -hmm. what's out there you know, are people willing to pay this? And you don't want to lowball yourself. <laughs> you don't want to lowball yourself. You want to find find out where find out where you need to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Your yeah, bargain price, man. It's unfair. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And so, and you know, when I when I figured that out, threw it on the website, and you know, obviously prayed on it and stuff. Um, and now that I have clients that are happy, satisfied customers that are paying that, it's like wow. When I was thinking about this before. I say to myself, like, hmm, is this where I need to be? Is this where I should be? Or should, you know, really trying to figure it out. But now it's it's literally that moment that that David was mentioning to me um, that I'm, I'm you know, I kind of just, I guess, passed the initial um, perspective of kind of seeing that. But that's that's where I'm at now. So it's now that I know that it's that it's real mm. and that people are happy and satisfied with the service. And and I have, you know, all, I have a lot of different ideas about the future of it and stuff, but at, at its ground level, it's kind of like it's it's making sure that that the subject makes sense for the students right. and that they they understand it and they have the resources that are necessary to help them be successful in it. That just being in a classroom where there are students that are that understand it a lot better and a lot worse than you and the teachers have such, you know, such um, they have the responsibility, a challenging responsibility of making sure to get the subject understood by everyone. Sometimes they got large classrooms too. Yeah, it's it's a lot for them. Yeah. So you you in certain instances, that's that's a, a very very necessary service to have when you could you know when you can swing it. Yeah, what age groups do you work with? Or so K through twelve. Although my youngest now, my youngest that I've had has been in second grade. My oldest has actually been in graduate school. So I've done I've worked with 
most of my students are middle school and high school. Mm. Um, but I work with younger and I work with older. But for sure, like the, the students that I'm that I'm focused in on are, are, are K through 12 right All now. Right. And then your, the how has the marketing been like? What what's the best way you've been getting to your like clients? Has it been through like the website, word of mouth? Or mm-hmm. I know you've been putting flyers out. Yeah. You also I, told me you made announcements at church about like mm-hmm. different your program. So, yeah. Yeah. It's definitely mostly been through word of mouth so far. Um, I'm still kind of kind of learning a couple of different things about like the social media marketing space mm-hmm. and everything. And actually one of the things that's awesome is like, is being able to take from some past experiences and apply them to the business. So one of which was I had an opportunity to take this, this uh, week long mini MBA class at, at uh, Verizon on digital marketing. And it was a class that was, Boom. Yeah. it was, yeah, man, it was like, it was, it was going to really help the position that I was in at the time, but it's, it's been hugely instrumental of some of these sort of, oh you know, God, yeah, entrepreneur life right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And at the time I, I didn't, I mean, I was certainly thinking you know, for sure about taking notes and making sure I can apply this stuff later, but I didn't know just how much I was going to mm-hmm. be able to. Um, but definitely, you know, social media um, is huge mm-hmm. and having that presence is definitely important. I think right now the word of mouth is, is the biggest. So it's it's been like if you do a good job with your service and if you're if you enjoy what you're doing and, and the students are successful as a result. If the students are getting better grades and understanding what they're doing more, then they're the parents are gonna be inclined to share that story with yeah. their parent friends. K Nats, yeah. Yeah. Can't get them a little t shirts too little <laughs> That that is that is absolutely coming. I mean the the I guess the two the two main things are like you know logos on like pencils and water bottles and book bags and t-shirts all that stuff is now that the logo and stuff is done and yeah, the website set, is there set, yeah yeah that stuff that's that's absolutely going to be happening for sure you'll be one of the you'll be you and tiff first sure. uh, people plug it all crazy yeah, on the show you, you already know, I mean? know man. absolutely <laughs> absolutely so talk about um I mean, you're still doing pro bono work right now a little yep. bit, right? And yep. then you're also doing the, you know, charging clients and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So where else do you feel like k Math or I guess, is there another field you, you want to go in that's kind of parallel to k Math, or are you trying to take that to the next level? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, with the pro bono work, actually, I do a, um, a workshop weekly at my church from 530 to 7 every Wednesday at Travelers Fellowship Community Church. And it's open for third grade through twelfth grade students. Right. And it's it's I'm a, sure you got a lot of clients over there. Yeah, it is. There's, it's, it's it's been a little bit lower over the summer because the summer has been, I guess, oh, challenging right. to get summer to get camp. Yep. Yeah, to get students in and stuff. But um, yeah, it's it's a I think a great resource for people to be able to drop their kids off and and just come and and you know build their build their strength build their strength in the subject that a lot of people struggle with. Um, so we, we have that open, not just for the church members, but also for just anyone who's, mm. who's in that, that, uh, age bracket. And it's a great, yeah, just a great place for me personally. I, I really love, you know, standing up on the board, work, writing up some problems and working with the students and interacting with them and the little sort of mini workshop setting versus the one-on-one is kind of giving me a, a taste of, um, you know, wh- how to apply certain tactics, you know, when you're, when you're dealing with one student or when you're dealing with a small group and stuff. So that's going really well. But I will say, you know, when we talk about passion, one of my other passions I've had an opportunity to really capitalize on in these 10 months has been the keys, man. Yeah, I knew it was coming. Bro, man. <laughs> I'm I, waiting on it. I've been... <laughs> I, talk about getting the piano, though. You, you you had picked it up before, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you're kind of back on it. You were taking some lessons. Right, right. Now it's all videos on social media. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. Je- Jess, Jess even knows. Like, the video I just posted was was best part, you know, just with like a good guitar uh sound on, on the piano that that I played. Sure. Um but yeah, there's 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 a lot there's a lot more advanced stuff that I've been working on that I just you know, I'm 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 excited to start sharing. Now now that I've kinda got it set up where you know, I got like a sort of make groundwork here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the mount, and I, I found even a way. I mean, something as simple as I think on some old videos, I, I used my phone, and it was like you know taken from the microphone on here. But on my, this is USB C. Not to get all technical for y'all, my bad. But this is USB C, yeah, and my digital. I know, I know. <laughs> is, I think this is USB C. my glasses on so I can look. <laughs> USB C, and so I can plug my keyboard right into this and yeah. record the stuff, and then the sound goes straight here. So the sound quality is much better, and that's that's an awesome thing there. 
Um, but yeah, man, I, I, I was able to play by ear when I was younger, when I was like in sixth grade and my dad, my parents signed me up for piano lessons uh, to learn how to read music. And that went really well. I had like one, um, not concert, what is it called? Recital. And I, I asked if I could take the summer off and then never, never join back up. But music for me has been something that has just always been not just about, li I love listening to music, of course, just like most of us do, but also like hearing something and just it transporting me and just, it kind of, it's just, it's something that I'm, I get really excited about. Yeah. Um, whether it's, you know, listening to this chord progression or this melody or whatever the case is. So I've always wanted to get back into it. Um, and I was, you know, again, blessed enough to have an opportunity to, to I, actually, I should say, I spent a year when I turned 30, I, I was like, I want to get back into this. Yeah. So I spent a year going through my, that book that I was, I was actually going through when I was, um, taking lessons the first time in sixth grade, I still had the book. So I went through that whole book as sort of a, you know, sort of a like throwback course, refresher yeah. type thing. Yeah. That went, that went really great. And then I, I signed up for lessons and I'm, I'm being taught right now by, a, you know, classically trained, uh, young lady. Those at, things ain't cheap neither. The, the courses, yeah. the, yeah, yeah, they're, they're pricey. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Them things are pricey. And it, it's interesting. Cause like, you know, you get, I was talking to my parents about, it. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how, how long I, I think I need to, or should stay versus Versus, you know, kind of just learning, having this foundation now and just doing my own thing. I'm definitely not there yet because the prog progress that I've made has been, you know, extraordinary. Mm -hmm. But eventually, you know, you get to a point where you where you could kind of self, I guess, contain and you can, you know, advance yourself and stuff like that. Um, but it's it's so much fun, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm learning classical pieces like Mozart and I'm interested in his his history and, and all these other, you know, Right, people's history yeah. it's, it's like it's really um the most incredible thing so yeah i had my chance to like finish my first um you know classical mozart piece not too long ago and now i just finished my second one and it's it's hard to put in words i mean i gotta put it in words because we're on a podcast <laughs> i gotta put it in words try to yeah, yeah. let me just say <laughs> it's like the most it's the most um like ex one of the most exciting things uh for me to do is is sit in front of the keys and just and play um and it's gotten to a point now where maybe when i was first starting out mm -hmm. it's like you know a little challenging to because you're just beginning and you're just practicing and it takes work because it it's not that fun i guess when you first start to practice but but once you start seeing some results and you start you start getting yeah, people nice. to say, yeah. yeah then it's like oh th this is this is a real thing and that's 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 where I'm at, where I'm at right now. So I would say when you talk about the parallel, I'm like I absolutely will incorporate some form of music lessons um, under the K Mats umbrella once I get to a point where the math is is a is an awesome it's already an awesome product awesome mm -hmm. service but once it's something that is even beyond awesome once mm -hmm. I once I that's where it needs to be mm -hmm. um, and once i'm at a point where i can provide a service yeah. that kind of mirrors that in the music in the music space yeah, so music become the mentee to the mentor that's it man <laughs> that's exactly it that's gonna be my slogan so music as you become the mentee so to as you mentor. actually scale your business or as your business keeps expanding are you planning to potentially bring more people on in the future to k match so as far as like the tutoring service and yeah. i guess way down the line the the piano musical you know uh, yeah. side of that yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I already have a couple of people in mind. One, one of which, one of my boys. What who, qualities are you looking for when you, you when you want somebody to come on? Because I mean, that's your brand now. So yeah, that's your, that's your baby. So you gotta a, make sure. Absolutely, and that, that's that's actually a main thing. It's like it's okay. Yeah, what what qualities? And I haven't thought extensively yet, but I guess just kind of brainstorming. Obviously, having a strong grasp in math and having a strong passion for people. Right. Just like I do. Yeah. And that those are the two things that are gonna be the most important. Because like you just said. Like, um, for sure, once I get to a point where I'm, I'm working with, you know, I haven't hit that exact number yet where I know, but maybe like 20 to 25 hours of me actually tutoring per week, I probably won't go beyond that. Once, once there's, you know, more students than, than I can handle at that point, that's when I'm looking to possibly, uh, you know, bring, bring people in and stuff. But my thought is, is yeah, if I could, if I have a program, if I have a way to make sure that, that things are uniform, this you know this individual is going to get the same quality you know of course with the mentoring stuff then there's other metrics that that you know that kind of matter that needs to be thought about with that but certainly you know having those two those key those two key things sure. being good in math and, and caring about people 
um, I think would be awesome to be able to spread that and, and allow to, you know, have more students be able to be um, benefited from this awesome, awesome company. Yeah. So do you have any success stories that come to mind right now from your, I do from uh, your service? Yeah, that's a great, quite great question. Actually one, one just today. And then today. I got a, a note. Yeah. 12. I got a, a, a text message from, from someone named Monique who, um, yeah, who I've been working with a grad grad student. And um, statistics, stuff that, you know, I needed to really brush up on because that was stuff that that was, you know, I've done before for sure, but haven't tutored in mm -hmm. extensively. But um, you got to plug in like the Matrix, like <laughs> it was a lot, man. There's a lot going on. With, I was like, I need to I need to spend some time like, you know, just really getting this stuff, you know, understood again before I could work, work with with you. But, yeah, she was you know struggling in the class and I was able to help her pass the class. Oh which was not something that I think at the time was, I don't, want, I don't want to say realistic, but it wasn't expected to happen. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, I'm probably gonna have to take this class again. So that was one, that was one. And then another one, one of the students that I work with now um, that was going to the Travelers Fellowship, um, the Travelers Tutoring Program at, at Travelers Church, uh, I work with him now one-on-one. -on -one, and we first started maybe just a couple of weeks before the end of the school year. He's, he goes to a... Um, school in mm, somewhere around Somerset. I forgot exactly what school he's in. But yeah, he was really struggling in, in honors algebra one. Honors algebra one, he was in ninth grade. And I ended up meeting with him. And this is usually not my, my I don't want to say cup of tea, but it's not, it's not the best thing to do to kind of cram. But in this particular instance, I was able to meet with him sort of several times in the last couple of weeks and really just knocked through the um, the study guide his teacher provided. And we, we spent several you know nights working together on it. Mm -hmm. And he got, I think, like an 88 or something really, really good on his final. So That's he was awesome. able to pass yeah. the class. And so that made me feel great because it's like one, it, it's, you know, if you're teaching when you're when you're working with students and stuff, they can kind of get what you're doing. Um, but are they able to translate that that? problem solving you know methodology yeah, are they able to execute yeah. yeah and sometimes you know there's 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 things that go on that you understand it but you're just not good at taking tests yeah. or whatever the case may be um and th those are things that i love talking about too it's, you know strategies not just about understanding the material but also um how to take a test right you got three or four pages on here are you gonna like just be like all right i'm just going sequentially just going start start to end are you opening the test up? Are you looking at everything? And you're like, all right, I'm doing this back page first because this is like easy. So what's, what, that's a good good reason you, or a good point to bring up. Like, what's your strategy when you meet like a new student? Like, how do you introduce yourself? Like, is that mm -hmm. all part of like your service? Like, or part of your, the logic that you think about before you you see a new client? Like, you're just like, hey, I want to make sure they feel comfortable. They're ready to go. Mm -hmm. And they're like really engaged in this. Yeah, yeah, totally. I, I have a, I guess, a, a relatively new thing that I've, that I've kind of started over the summer, which is, you know, right, I do a lot, like most of my tutoring on the iPad, and then, you know, either they're, they're solving problems on there, or maybe they have a notebook or something. But um, yeah, on my iPad now, I have like a maybe three page sort of questionnaire, but not so much of like a hey. boring, oh, we got to answer these. It's more of like, I forget, I forget all the questions I don't have, but some of them are you know, what was your favorite vacation? Kind of icebreaker type stuff, yeah. right? You know, obviously their name and then favorite subject and, and maybe least favorite subject in school, favorite vacation, just some general questions like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then usually the parents are there. So we talk about what are their goals? Because what I've learned too is that some parents, you know, are have, you know, really, really strong uh, feelings about not just their student be doing well, but them excelling, like even beyond excelling. I'm working mm -hmm. with some students that are in that. And then some students who are who struggled with algebra one just couldn't grasp it and need to take it again next semester. So their parents are just, let's get, let's get, you know, my son or that daughter. Foundation. Let's yeah. build that foundation. Let's right. make things happen. And so I'm I'm working with right now, currently, you know, students on both ends of the spectrum. And for me, it's it's so much fun because this stuff is is kind of just like it's like you said, building the foundation, building their confidence, mm -hmm. because if you fill a class, like you you may not be confident in yourself at that point. So kind of incorporating some of the mentorship things in there. Whereas this student, you see, you know, you see them solve a problem a way that you didn't think to solve it mm -hmm. because they're so bright. And it's like, it's like, all right, well, 
I'm gonna. I need to spend some time um, during this week. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, nah, I need to. Did I make need, you want to brush up on yourself? Like, yeah, okay. I, I see what you're doing. I need to spend some time. Yeah, that's that 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 absolutely could be part of it. But I was gonna say I need to spend time um, preparing. Young Anakin Skywalker. So. <laughs> Like the force is strong, which is exactly you, youngin. Yeah. Now you also do like um, some. You did, you did some lectures as well, man. I, I did want to talk about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. So you, you went through a program called Toastmasters, and mm-hmm. can you talk a little bit about Toastmasters and also some of these lectures that you did because you did one at Rutgers. Right? That's right. That's right. right. Yeah. And I was gonna say just for the record, that previous thing was spending time on not to be all politically correct, but spending time on like preparing challenging work that's not just like. Oh, we're gonna review your homework so that you can get a hundred or ninety something on this. But it's like it's going beyond that to make sure yeah, that the, make their sure goals are met, right? Yeah, that that kind of thing. I had to get that out there yeah. real quick. Oh, my all bad. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, it's all good. You got it out there, man. Got it out to real the universe. quick. Yeah, it's, it's out there. <laughs> but um, yeah. So uh, about yeah, Toastmasters. I mean, public speaking is something that I've I, I'm I I, I want to get really good at. I, I I love the idea of being able to to communicate effectively to um to kind of keep people interested in what it is that you're saying and be articulate, be clear what you're saying, have interesting and, and, and informative things to be able to share and stuff. And, you know, like Ted talks and these types of things. I, I love watching those videos. And, and even when I had chance, you know, times at Verizon to see some of the presenters talk and how they pace back and forth, or maybe just stand there, yeah, but they, yeah. you know, all different techniques and stuff like that. So, so Toastmasters helps with that. It gives you an opportunity. I haven't been there in a while, actually, but when I was going, it gives you an opportunity to, to just be in front of a group of people and just talk about, you know, anything. One of the, one of the, the table topics, the, one of the, I think the first, the first one I went to was about, uh, you go up and you pull this, you know, a paper out of a hat and it has the name of an animal on it. And you have to, you know, they give you like maybe five seconds or so and you just start talking. You have to like act as if you are that animal and just talk about a day in the life of that animal, which might sound simple. Like if you, if I gave you an animal, I was like, okay, a parrot, and then you got five seconds. And then you just talking to me as a parrot about how, how your life goes. I'm not going to put you on the spot. That was mine, was a parrot. <laughs> and I was just like, oh man, I, I was like, oh, you know, wake up. I don't remember what I said. Wake up and you know, I'm, I'm in a cage, so I, but you know, I'm a bird. I should be able to fly around, but it got me locked in this cage or something. It didn't sound that smooth. I probably was stuttering yeah. and it wasn't smooth like that. <laughs> but I, you know, it, it was, it's cool because, you know. Helpful, yeah. Just yeah. Develop that skill of, you know, talking. Talking yeah. and spo- spontane- spontaneously and just kind of, you sure. know, getting things across and stuff. So part of um, the, the thing I did at Rutgers was a professional development workshop. And that came about from the first time that I got laid off. Well, the only time I got involuntarily laid off. At that time, I, I was looking to, um, I was looking, actually, you know what? That Saturday after I got, after I got the news, I had agreed to represent Verizon at a Nesby uh, recruiting conference. Mm. And which was weird because I was getting laid off and I was recruiting new college students coming in. I was like, hmm. recruiting after you get laid off. Right, right. Interesting situation. It was, it was very a but sticky. It turned out that, um, and actually, when I told, I, I, you know, kind of hit. It was actually a fun weekend because I hit it off with like the HR people that were there. They were like like minded and stuff, and we were all just chatting. And then, like later on that night. I think I was oh, by the way, I was like, I don't know if you guys know, but I'm actually laid off. I'm not going to be working here anymore. And they were just so like. <laughs> yeah, I'm not actually employed at this date. Right, right. They were just surprised. And, you know, they were, yeah, it was just, it was a, a funny kind of interaction. But, um, but yeah, so at that Nesby event, I had met with um, someone who was a part of the MEET program, who is now, actually, congrats to Brother Mike Brown. He just graduated with his PhD. Not PhD. What is it called? EdD, educational doctorate degree. Uh, so he's a dean at Rutgers now. At the time, he oh, was yeah. yeah. He's great, great, great dude. Um, but yeah, I was talking to him about about what I was you know thinking about doing next and stuff. And he ended up connecting me with the person who uh, is part of the EOF program at Rutgers Educational Opportunity Fund. I think it stands for. Um, and yeah, I was able to put together a workshop. This was pro bono. Did it did it two years. And it was me talking to the first year was just engineering students. Next year was engineering and it was open for everyone. And yeah, just talking about um, everything, professional development. So how was it like being in front of that whole crowd? Like, (laughs) Man, yeah. So you felt they were engaged? Like you felt like you had a good job afterwards or you had to get some feedback to kind of understand where you like sat? Yeah, yeah. So the first time I did it, it was in a classroom setting. There were probably about maybe 15 or 20 students in there. 
Uh, I remember being nervous the first the first day and the first few minutes of the first day. And then I kind of you know loosened up and I was fine. But then the next week, excuse me, I spent a lot more time uh, on the material because there was a couple like little hiccups and yeah. stuff the first time. And so I spent more time. I was in a training class that Wednesday and I was I was so excited to you know get out of there so I can go go to Rutgers. I was like really pumped up to kind of get started. Mm-hmm. And I just remember being, you know, putting a little bit more time in and practicing a little bit more. And then to the point where, you know, I have the slides behind me, but I'm, I was like just talking to the students. And I just remember that being a huge, hugely different reaction from the students. Me just looking at them, having a conversation, the yeah. slides back here, it just flowed perfectly. Yeah, and you then, always connect better when you don't read off the slides. Like oh, that. man. Yeah. You can't just be like looking back here. And just, yeah, that's yeah. not that's not how that's not how it goes. It's that mama mentality. He said he's never he never felt pressure because he prepared so well that. He, he was already ready for that situation when it arrived. Mm. He said he, he took that shot a thousand times in practice. What's another time? <laughs> See, I like that, man. That's real right there. Yeah, if you, have, if you put the work in and if you, if you have confidence in yourself, then there's no reason why you should feel pressure, I guess, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, or I nervous. Like that. So, yeah, yeah, a little Kobe action for y'all. Let's throw that out there real so quick. So that was you know? something you want to kind of continue going forth as far as, you know, doing more public speaking like that. Yeah, totally, Maybe a TED totally. talk in the future. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> any, any opportunity to be in front... And actually, to, to share with you too, the second time that I did that that um, the, the workshop, it was it was in an auditorium, and I, it, it was like I just remember walking in there, and it's like a stage, and you got the big screen, mm. and you got the. I was just like, wow, this is this is really really awesome. I was like really pumped up, really excited for that, and a lot of students came, and they were they were energized, you know, just from the inter- introductions, and I had each student. There wasn't so many where it was it was gonna take forever to do introductions. Yeah. So I had them, you know, introduce themselves and favorite activity and this and that. So you got some students. It was just so cool. Like you got some students that are like, oh, yeah, my favorite activity is, you know, I like playing video games. I'm like, oh, I play games too. I was like, what do you play? He's like, well, you know, we play Smash Brothers. And that's like the main game that I play yeah, now. I'm like, oh, who you use? Smash Brothers. <laughs> it was just, It was just like, you know, and that, that kind of we just. get gamer tag after this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get that game. Or actually, in this case, let me get that friend code, that, that 16 digit friend code. Nintendo, y'all got to update that. That's wild that we got to do 16 digits or whatever it is. But um, and then you got people. Oh yeah, I like watching Netflix. I'm like, oh, what's your favorite show? And um, you know, I'm watching the show called The Office. Well, they didn't, they didn't say it that way, but I'm watching The Office, and I, that's my favorite show of all time, yeah. personally. So I'm, I'm like, oh wow, you know, I'm really excited, genuinely excited. So I think that kind of resonated with the students yeah, and stuff to set the stage. You know, the ice was broken. It was just, it was shattered. <laughs> shattered. The ice was shattered. So that's one of the things you would continue going. So. Um, I just want to thank you for coming out for the podcast, man. Of course, man. Did a very good job, man. Um, I think I learned a lot about the services you provide, K Mats, yep. your the future of K Mats, your your passion, your story. So I want you to go ahead and plug your business real quick. Oh, <laughs> the should website. I in, should I look in camera one you or should I look? Go ahead, man. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. But the sure. website is uh, is uh, Kevin Tutoring www.kevintutoring.com. Mm-hmm. So you guys can check that out. K through twelve. Yeah. K through twelve tutoring. Um, I, I you know I really love the way it came out. Um, I had an opportunity to to create it myself, have a vision for it. And, you know, again, blessed to to be able to spend time learning about how to design a website and then be able to put it together. And, you know, I have, I have plans for eventually, actually, I want to do like a sort of blog post type thing on the website Mm. to be able to have um, some of the students that were in these, in these workshops and some of my current students just be um, sort of uplifted and informed about different things that are going on and different tips and stuff. Like, for example, I was I was um, I think I was sharing with my mom one of the videos of me during the presentation, something that I never posted. because I actually recorded all of them like like on my phone or whatever. And I think I only posted a couple of things. But my mom is like she's like, Kevin, you know, this is this is so important. I think one of them was something about getting to know your professors, I think, was one of one of the, the key things. I had a story about that. And I'm you know, I'm, I'm going to you know, it'll take time to like, you know, chop it up and, you know, be able to post it and stuff. But things like that, to be able to put some tidbits and stuff to mm-hmm. kind of inspire students and, and, and educate them and everything like that. Um, and just excited to excited to be here. First of all, I know, you know, this has been a while. I know we've tried to. Get get our schedules aligned for a little while. Yep, man. But we made it happen I'm finally. King, I figured it out eventually. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Everybody who was out there that I've been texting, coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> As you should, bro. But uh, I do want to thank you for coming out, Kevin. Man, uh, very in, uh, insightful today, man. Uh, hopefully, people 
listen to this episode and <laughs> they will. I'm come post. to the website. I'm gonna post it. I'm gonna post it. I'm gonna have some. I'm gonna have this gonna be. Well, it's great that know there's like a tutoring service out there, man. Yeah. Especially with a young black dude, man, doing his thing. So appreciate that. Thank man. you for coming out, man. Uh, any last words for the people out there? Uh, no, just yeah, happy to be here. I was, you know, really excited. Oh, yeah, happy early birthday. I probably maybe oh. I dropped this on your birthday. It's Not, Thursday, oh, right? Oh, that would be dope, actually. Yeah, man. Ooh, I like I'll be that taking, plan right there, bro. It's all about four I momentum. What, I don't know why my voice got high just now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's a dope plan. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, nothing else, man. Just happy to be here. Excited. Um, looking forward to the future of the business, and and I'm hopeful. And oh, one more thing, I want to share that I, I got a. I'm gonna be teaching middle school. I don't think a lot of people maybe notice or not, but yeah, I'll be teaching middle school math. I landed a position uh, at Princeton Charter School, Clap which up. I'm excited about. <laughs> Which I'm really looking forward to. Uh, two weeks from today is oh, my first day, awesome, you know, man. at the school. So that's going to be, I think, incredible for me to be able to, you know, have some real life experience doing that thing. Yeah. And then we'll see how that can kind of help shape build the, the business, brand, make build, it stronger. Build the experience, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're going to wrap it up right there, man. Uh, Tiff's telling me there's the bug upstairs that I need to kill. So <laughs> it's been the I Said Wi-Fi show. So show. <laughs> Episode 56. We out. One. Later, man.